Hello everyone, thank you for coming today. My name is Mariusz Kierski and I'm an intern this year on the JavaScript team. And uh, the JavaScript team uh, works on the JavaScript the SpiderMonkey engine. We optimize it and add new features and the latter was my uh, task for this year. So I uh, implemented asynchronous functions in ECMAScript 7. So, but instead of just talking about the asynchronous functions, uh, I'd rather uh, show you a practical scenario that is uh, now cumbersome to work with without uh, this particular language, language feature. And uh, we'll think uh, how it can be done now and how we could uh, optimize this with our new language feature. And after that, I will uh, talk about what I had to do in order to implement uh, async functions in the SpireMonkey engine. So our scenario will be just uh, sample code. We'll write code that uh, comments, comments, comments uh, of a blog post. Uh, it's a very common scenario uh, on the internet. Uh, we will have three API functions to do it, and we have to call each, uh, af each uh, one after another sequentially in order to get uh, all the objects we need. Uh, and uh, we don't care about performance because it's mostly uh, API calls, so there is nothing that we can actually optimize here. But we want to make us code very clean, very reusable, so that other programmers can work with it, can understand this code, and that um, we can understand our own code. So this is the first way we will do this. Uh, as we can see here, uh, it's a very simple code. It's two pieces of code. Uh, the function count comments on post uh, just retrieves data from the remote endpoints, and uh, after that, it uh, does the processing. In this case, it's just uh, property retrieval. So we get the block object, and then we feed the block object to the get, get post method, and the post object that we treat, retrieve, we give it to the get comments method. And after that, mm, we get an array, and we just return the length of this array, which will be the number of comments. And uh, uh, the other part uh, is the display logic. In this case, it's very simple. It only uh, writes uh, text on the console. But because count comments and posts uh, can fail, because the APIs could fail, mm, there could be no internet, for example, mm, we have to surround it with a try-catch block and then display an error message. OK, so we can see this code is uh, very clear. It's uh, very reusable. We have separated all layers, just like it's supposed to be. But the code is unresponsive because uh, the API calls could take a very long time, and it could never actually finish. And until we do this, the user interface will be blocked and we can we have no the user cannot interact with the application so this is not acceptable we can't use this code for our application unless we are writing a console application but we're uh, we're not in this case so we probably want to make our api calls asynchronous in order to uh, have the response the responsiveness of the application so let's just try uh, modify our code a bit. We will add a callback parameter to each of the API call so that we can put the rest of the code in a callback. And let's do it and see what happens. Uh, yeah, so it does work, but we can see that uh, the code doesn't really look good. We have uh, error logic repeated in a few places. And uh, oh yeah, and uh, we can also see that the code is not very readable, and it uh, grows to the right, which is uh, commonly referred as to the callback hell, which is a situation that uh, we put uh, too much logic in subsequential callbacks. And uh, well, this is not this doesn't look good, and uh, if you see it for the first time, you have no idea what this can be doing. So what can we do? We can use the promise pattern. This is the most well-known pattern that 
alleviates most of the problems with asynchronous code design. And initially it was available just as a library, so it's an idea that uh, comes from the community. And the ECMAScript committee liked it so much that they actually included that in the JavaScript language as of ECMAScript 6 standard. So right now you can just use the promise pattern straight in the, your JavaScript code without need to use any libraries. And let's try rewriting this once again. So we can see the code with promises is uh, much easier, it looks much better. And we can see that uh, it's clear and we have uh, error logic only in one place. So how this works, instead of uh, passing the callback to any of the API calling methods, we just, uh, they return a promise object that promises that the, the value will eventually be there in this object and to get it out of it we need to use the then method and uh, tell it what's supposed to do with this object and with this we can chain promises and make bigger chains so it makes works with uh, asynchrony much easier and this is better because uh, it's easier to write shorter, uh, better quality code. And the code is reusable. But it's still not what we want. Because it's still not natural. Uh, ideally, what we would want to achieve is to use similar constructs as we use with the synchronous code, but uh, not losing the asynchrony, uh, having still the responsibility of UI or Mm, making other calculations in the background. So ideally we would like to suspend the execution of the function whenever we want to retrieve uh, information that is supposed to come asynchronously, uh, wait until it arrives and then execute the rest of the code. Can we achieve this? Well, with uh, JavaScript of right now, we can't really do this. So an ECMAScript 7 proposal, so ECMAScript 7 is the language standard that's supposed to come into use like in a few years. It uh, features async and await keywords that uh, will try to solve this problem. So if we put the async specifier before a function declaration, it allows us to use await keyword in uh, the function code the way it works is that it suspends the execution of the async function until the parameter, which is a promise or an expression that resolves to a promise, is resolved to a value. And when we have uh, the parameter resolved to a value, the promise resolved to a value, the entire expression uh, resolves to this value. So in this case, uh, the variable data will have the content of the file. I will talk about in detail, but let's not f just uh, for a second come back to the synchronous example once again and look at it. We had this uh, one function and the try block, and it turns out that if we use async functions, uh, there is no not much uh, code modification needed in order to uh, achieve a full asynchrony. So as you can see, the only thing I did is to add the async specifier before account comments on post function declaration and await before each of API calls, which now return a promise instead of work synchronously. And because an async function uh, also returns a promise that evaluates to whatever we return or undefined if we do not have a return statement, I had to use a wait uh, in the console log there. So because I needed to use a wait, I had to wrap uh, all this display logic in another function. And then I had to call this function. And now let's walk through it and see how exactly it works. So let's start with count comments and post uh, function. And we have the first line await get blocks. So the await keyword suspends the execution until get block will finish. 
and then the value will be assigned to the block variable. And this is cool because we don't need to pass callbacks of any kind. So the following statements will only be executed as long as we have the value ready. So we have the value in the block variable ready for us. And in the end, we just return from a regular array the value. And then in display comments count, uh, when we await the counts comment on post, so this can fail. For example, the promise that get blog or get post or get comments return, it can fail because there could be no network access or the API um, call could just fail. And in this case, the entire promise that uh, count comments on post returns will also fail. And uh, if this happens and we have uh, a wait statement with a wait count comments and post. This will just throw a regular exception that uh, can be caught by a regular try catch block. And it's very convenient because you have you don't have to add any kind of handlers anymore. And the last thing we have to do is to call the display comments count because we are no longer in uh, async function context, we cannot use the await, but since this returns a promise, we can just call then on it and display an information if everything's ready. So we saw that the async code is very similar to synchronous version of code, and we can use all the language constructs that we know from regular synchronous JavaScript, like try catch, like if statements, like for loops, we can do all of this. We have this uh, sequential flow of data processing, like every statement is uh, executed one after another, separated by semicolons. So language is uh, much more express, much, yeah, much more expressive because we could, for example, embed a weight expression in an arithmetic operation. For example, we could uh, add two numbers that are retrieved via promise. And uh, in order to make uh, async functions work, I had to work a lot with the SpireMonkey engine. So at first I had to implement the rules of the parser in order for them to recognize uh, the constructions of async functions, await, and uh, also not to accept them where they're not acceptable. I had to implement logic that uh, turned these expressions into uh, actual bytecode. And uh, that's uh, a good thing because I didn't have to add any new bytecode uh, operations. We could achieve that only by uh, generators and self-hosted JS code that uh, controls the flow of an async function execution. All right, uh, thank you. I'd like to thank my mentor, Airfost the entire JS team and the JS API channel IRC, entire Mozilla for an awesome internship experience this year, and thank you all for listening. Any questions this time? All right, thanks.